Romans 13, 11, the Bible says, Knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. As I have studied and studied, I believe that many believers are sleepwalking. Many churches are asleep. I'm not saying they don't go to church and sit in the pews as rumpers. But church is more than attendance and learning. It's about making disciples a great commission. When we surrender our lives to Christ, we will surrender to be about His work, which He gave by His authority. When He said, go out and make disciples, He talked about sharing your faith, leading others to Christ, that their faith would grow, teach them to be obedient. I would say most believers are sleepwalking. It's been a long time since they've shared their faith and reached out, the average believer throughout America. We would surrender our lives to Christ. Can you imagine the magnitude of influence every believer would have? Throughout America, every church would be over full. We have a lot of discussion in society right now. There's discussion about gun control. Many uh, opponents and souls would say we need less guns and more control. And just as many would say that, there's another side that would say the opposite. One thing we know for certain, darkness is in the land. Everybody say amen. And it's sad to see people hurt. But it's sad to see a land where schools are a place of fear. Where shopping malls need to be guarded. Where churches need security. Where our homes are a place we fear violence outside and within. And everybody will discuss the answer. There's one thing I do know. The only answer to darkness is the light of Jesus Christ. And why on the national scene isn't there discussion of Christ and Christ Jesus? He is the answer to the problems. We cover it up with endless discussions. I have the blessing of praying in two weeks at Richmond for the delegates. The answer is not in man's hands, only in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the answer is sharing Christ to change lives. Every time I see violence in the land, God reminds me of my past and reminds me that I could be just like one of the darkest. He reminds me this morning of years ago, me and my boys, we were teenagers, had a gang in Florida that said they were going to hurt us and put us in the hospital. We showed up that night where they hung out. Clubs in hands, broke in their place, busted it apart, looking for them. Thanks be to God they weren't there because we thought we were bad and they were just as bad. Darkness was in the heart. Darkness was in the streets. And I pray my life is a testimony that only the Lord Jesus Christ can take that darkness out and give light where there used to be hatred. The only answer to the darkness in the land is the light of Jesus Christ. Amen? God changed me. He changed this old boy. He could change anyone. If we be about His work and stick to the task at hand, God put a deep in my heart that we must be about the task of Christ. I'm not saying government doesn't have its place. It does. But I'm saying the church is the answer to the darkness. In every one of us. It's amazing 
what each life can do if we get on fire for God. As you go into 2013, I challenge you to be the light that goes out to reach lives. You know, we have these cards I had printed up. And you have all been given them. We printed up over 5,000 of them. What would happen if every one of us got excited for Christ, went out into our neighbors and into the streets and started inviting people to Jesus Christ? Come to church and hear the Word of God. The Word of God changes lives. Let me tell you about Heather. Look what God did. Let me tell you about those in the church that got in tune with God and see the mighty things God will do. What if people got excited? And did the Lord's work. All of God's kids. What would happen in this land would be amazing. Jesus Christ is the answer. And His Spirit lives in us. And I believe we can make a difference. I can't wait to take the cards to my neighbors. Guess what? Yeah, what? Um, I went and visited my neighbors yesterday. Put Tyson on the four wheeler, wheeler and we took off across the ways. They live down the way um, a little bit. And it's funny when you live in the holler, you meet different people. So as I'm going there, I get halfway, three quarters of the way there. I'm pulling up to them, and they're all sitting out back at the picnic table and hanging out. Two, three, four generations. And I get all the way there and I realize I don't have my dentures in. I'm like, oh no! Like, this is embarrassing. I was talking like this. They can't see. Anybody ever done that besides me? I do it all the time anymore. Hang too. So I get there and as I pull up to them, I say, well, boy, Jason. And I look at them. None of them got teeth. I'm like, yes! <laughs> I fit in this group. In Redneckville, I live and here I am. <laughs> Made me some friends. Uh -huh, and the holler is good. They'll be looking after each other. <laughs> they deer hunt and all kinds of things. If you don't go on the holler to cause trouble, we have trouble there. They protect each other. I got friends. I can't wait to be a servant of Jesus Christ and go this week and invite them to church. The day would know Christ Jesus. They said, that's the funniest preacher. I've never seen a preacher like that. <laughs> Welcome to the holler, boy. <sighs> Why do people not go about doing the Lord's work? I believe it's because of this. They're sleepwalking. They're sleepy churches. Sleepy believers. And God would come and say, Awake! Awake! Do you not see the hour at hand? Do you not see the darkness? Do you not see what's going on in society? And can you imagine these ones who die, die without Christ, an eternal death of hell? And you have the answer, Wake up! Wake up! And get out! Wake up, sleepy church! Just like when Jesus, before his arrest, went out to the garden to pray. He is sweating, drops of blood, great tension for the hours at hand. And he goes a little further. If we're going to be like Christ, the key is to go just a little further in your witness. Just a little further down the road to the holler and take those cards and say, Hey, I want to tell you about my church. I want you to come and hear the word of God. God has a plan for your life. You put dreams in your hearts and God will see you come through in obedience. Come and see. But just like that night, Christ was sitting in the garden. He went a little further and dropped and prayed and said, Oh, Father, if there's any other way. And he came back to the disciples and they were what? Asleep. Three times Christ went a little further. I have found this, beloved. The key to one that truly surrenders all is the key that they just go a little further to make a difference in this world. Just a little further. And God will do mighty things. I pray as I open the Word of God today, you will get excited and desire to go just a little further. I pray if you've fallen asleep at the wheel, God will wake you up and say, We have a plan! Come on, beloved, stick to the task at hand. 
A great commandment church that loves God and loves others is in a prime position to go out and make a difference in this world. All of 2012, God put on my heart to preach love, love, love. For a church that loves one another, I just saw love shining. During one of the praise songs, I was watching Pastor Moyer, who I just hold in such high respect and love so dearly. And Pastor, I, know, I, I didn't think you knew the words of the praise song, but you were singing along every word. And I praise God for that. That God would bring us all together in love. But with the task of the commission of Christ. I want you to stand with me for the reading of God's Word if you're able. Ephesians chapter 5. May God fire you up. May He wake us up. May He open our hearts to His great Word. Ephesians 5 verse 13. things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you do not work circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. <coughs> Let's pray. Father God, bless this message and wake us up. Everyone, I ask this Christ in your precious name. Amen. You may be seated and still have a little cough. Uh, bear with me. In the first part of 513, all things are exposed, manifest by the light. I'm asking you, are you the light? To your community, to your neighbors? Is there the love of Christ in you that is substantially different? Has God blessed your life? Has God given you hope and dreams? Has God moved in a mighty way? And if the answer is yes, wouldn't you desire that for all that you know? There is great darkness in the land. The answer is Jesus Christ. And we say, well, where's the problem? Verse 14 shows the current day church. I'm not saying this church, but I'm saying all churches. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead. And Christ will give you light. And here we say, starts with a command. Awake up! Wake up, church! Yeah, a lot of y'all are arguing about gun control. But why aren't you out spreading Christ? That's the answer. But he's saying, wake the one that's sleeping. Awake out of that pew. Get out. Arise from the dead. And he said, well, what is dead? Dead to God's kingdom and his purpose. Kingdom builders. That's the task at hand. Building the kingdom of God. That's the dream. One thing I've noticed in my life, we have been blessed so much. But I found in my life personally over the last 20 something years, if I seek my blessings, they seem to take me in circles. But if I seek God's work, 
and His kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All these things will be added to you. I have found in my life as a testimony, if I seek the things of God, He knows my hearts, my desires, and my dreams, and He will seek to the things for me as a blessing. The key is seek God's kingdom work and trust Him with the results that your life will be blessed. Is that faith? Everybody say, woohoo! I mean, a life of faith. God, if I'm about your work, you'll take care of my things. You wouldn't believe how many people got on me a year or so ago. You're going to go where and live in that house with no heat? What is your plan, pastor? I said, I don't know, but I'm going to go there and we're going to do the Lord's work and believe he'll take care of it all. And praise God, he put me in the holler and we love it. You say, well, was it easy? No. You want an easy life? Go back to sleep. I want a life that's about God's work. Being obedient and trusting Him for the results. You know, if you put me in the middle of a fancy city, I wouldn't fit in. Wake from the dead. Christ will give you light. Imagine a church full of God's light. Going about and doing God's business. Sticking to the task at hand. Everyone, 5,000 cards. Let me see if I can pull them out without messing up my sound. I prayed a lot about these. Sticking to the task at hand. Share the good news. I want you to pay attention to the cross. And it's up in front, and it's out in front. And I plan on leaving it there. And you say, why? I, I know it's a beautiful glass behind it. But this is what I found. And it goes all the way back. Ten years ago, God put this vision on my heart. The vision He gave me was the cross with the hearts and the arrows. That if God's church would love God with all their heart and their mind and their soul, and that love would go up to God. When you love God like that, automatically your love will go out to the world around you and be about His work. Why? Because at the cross, Christ saved my soul and gave me a task to make a difference. From the very beginning, when I accepted Christ, I knew I was saved from hell. I knew I was saved from sin's control. And I loved Him so much. The task at hand is a great commission to go out. You know, a few years ago, this I think I've told you all this before, a lady came up to me and says, this is in Florida, she says, a couple of your boys came up on their skateboards and scared me. I said, they did. They were from your church. I said, what do they do? She says, they took out these cards and invited me to church. I'm like, yes. She says, I wish boys in our church were like that. You see, these boys got on fire. So, it's, it's a tool. But imagine if every believer used the tools that God has given you to make a difference. What would happen? I say it's mighty things. I ask you, do you care about souls? I'm concerned about the believer that doesn't care about the lost souls around them. I say they're in a spiritual sleep and they need to wake up. They're sleepwalking. Depravity makes the sleepy think they're awake. Sin's depravity makes the sleepy church think it's awake. But we go to church, we come and Monday. I'm like, yes. But would you please tell me the last time that you went out to make a disciple? That you went out to reach a soul? Can you please tell me the last time you went out to make a difference? Well, you know why my difference is sitting in the pew. I'm like, yeah, that's great, but you can sleep all day, but you're not awake until you get out to the task at hand. Like, hey, pastor, that's harsh. But do we understand the words of Christ? Awake from the dead. Awake to the light, the Great Commission. Sad truth. Sleepy churches make argumentative theologians. 
Uh huh. They argue about small differences in God's word, how they interpret it. Sleepy churches argue about what type of songs they sing or how they dress or about the pastor's new hairdo. Uh huh. Yeah. Sleepy churches are all about stuff, but not about the work of Christ. Sleepy churches are making believers, but I forgot to teach them obedience so they'd be disciples. Do you know the difference? Disciple is about the Lord's work. A sleepy soul does not like to be woke up. Everybody say amen. I was sleeping in good this morning. Got an extra hour. Nice and warm in my blankets. Spiritual sleepy believers don't like to be woken up. One, they have to acknowledge their sleep and not about the Lord's work. Two, they have to repent. Three, they have to get busy. And it's so much easier to sleep. A sleepy soul does not care if other souls are damned to hell. And at first when I wrote this, I say, I told Carla, change that word, damned. I, I think that's a little too harsh, Carla. And the Lord put it on my heart, don't you do that. And I went back and said, Carla, change it back again. Thank God for word processors and stuff. We'd rather say they're lost than say they're damned to hell. Why? Because lost is just one thing. But as Christians, to see a soul that's damned to eternal hell without Christ is quite another. A sleepy church and a sleepy believer doesn't care of that eternal fate of that soul. A spiritually awake cares for that soul deeply to reach them for Christ. We say amen. A sleepy soul professes Christ but doesn't serve Him. And you know through our lives the way we serve Christ will change. And let us not misunderstand that. For instance, a young man can serve God in more physical ways. But an older man is just, if not more so important, like Pastor Moyer, that serves God with wisdom and love and prayer. You know how blessed I am to know this man prays for me every day? We serve God in a mighty way, but a variety of ways. You say, I outgrew the way I serve the Lord. I say, no, it's just a new season to serve in a new way. We're all going to change through life. But when we never change and become sleepy from servanthood. The Bible says, awake. But there's a promise. And Christ will give you light. A church that's alive and awake will have the light of Christ. A church that's asleep spiritually will not have the light of Christ. And where the light of Christ is void, you will not have love and kindness and peace. It goes deep. The Great Commission is also a promise upon obedience. Matthew 28. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to be obedient, to observe things I have commanded you, the promise, and lo, 
I am with you always. I believe God is with us here. Before I preach every Sunday, I like to get on my knees and pray, God, be here strong. Oh, Heavenly Father, be here and touch lives. Oh, Heavenly Father, guide my words. Oh, Heavenly Father, I always want to get up and preach my best, but I always got to get down on my knees and confess my sins and ask God to reveal any ways in me that need to change. Oh, God, would you just visit this church in a mighty way with your light? Oh, God, would your love just thrive? Oh, God, would you wake this church to purpose everyone? And I am with you always. That's a promise. But God gave a promise to the awakened church. And this is what he's crying out. Revive! The church revived is awake! And that's the answer. Right now the signs are all over society. The arguments are not what society is making them. The argument is about whether the church will see the darkness of society and get revived and awake and go out. He said, you make it so simple. And I say, why do y'all make the gospel of Jesus Christ so complicated? The simple gospel saved my soul and changed me. It can do that for everyone. We would seek Him first. His work. I challenge you, everyone, to be about the Lord's work. Every soul reaching out. The answer is right there. Awake. Verse 15. See that you walk. You know, God is saying, walk as a wise man. Walk as one who is awake, full of the Spirit, full of love, about the Lord's work. Walk to walk. Not as fools, but as wise. Every time I hear people argue about things that make no difference in God's kingdom work, I say, wake up! You know, it's funny. It happened more in Florida, but it'll start happening here as people get to know me more and more throughout the community. Somebody would walk up to me throughout the community and say, you're the part of that Baptist church over there. I mean, yes. Well, you Baptists believe this and pick an argument with me in the middle of the grocery store. You know, and I would just look at them. I said, don't we have better things to do than argue about something that doesn't make a difference? Let's get awake. Let's go share Jesus. Come on, man. Let's just go down the halls of the grocery store. That's what I'm going to do in Woodstock. Next time someone likes to argue about something, I said, come on. We're going to walk up and down every hall of Food Lion witnessing Jesus. They're going to look at me like, what? You know, next time they see me, they'll run. I'm going to wake them up. But as you imagine if everyone got awake. Yeah, I have a way to make friends. It's good. Outwardly dead and asleep to God's kingdom usefulness. And Christ says, awake and I'll give you light. I'll give you purpose. See God's light, His purpose, His will. And trust Him with the results that your dreams will be well cared for. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Time is short. Redeem every day the time God has given you. Make a difference. Redeem it to the kingdom work. Therefore, verse 17, do not be unwise, do not be sleepy spiritually, but understand what the will of the Lord is. I challenge you, beloved, to be wise. And understand what the will of the Lord is for this church. 
I will tell you with no doubt in my soul it's to be about his work a great commission church making disciples going out imagine what would happen in this community every one of us would wake up and go out to reach souls a simple tool as a card to invite them what would happen here would be a mighty awakening. Twelve disciples turned the world upside down. What would a few hundred here do in Woodstock? I have no doubt that God will do mighty things when His people come together, stick to the task at hand, and say we are a great commission church about God's work and we do God's work as a great commandment church love God love others going out building his kingdom kingdom builders so as you kick off 2013 I pray God will put a mighty dream on your heart and I pray that you will have the faith to know that if you're about God's work and you wake up that God will be about your dreams and you can trust Him. It starts with a surrender. It started in my life when I surrendered myself to Jesus Christ. Asking Him to forgive my sins for I knew I needed it. That day that I prayed that God would forgive me and live in my heart and I didn't know the ramifications all I knew is I needed Jesus I needed forgiveness I needed to get rid of the guilt that I carried for too many years for the awful things I've done and when I knew Christ loved me so much that he forgave me it changed my life and it can change yours if you have never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior believed upon Him that He died on the cross for your sins and rose from the dead. Today's the day for that. Maybe you have put your faith in Christ, but you've never surrendered and had a believer's baptism. You need to come down and we'll set one up. Maybe you've never surrendered to be a part of a local church where you belong and you're serving. God is calling you to be part of this church. Surrender and come down. And be about God's work. Maybe you need to surrender today that you know you've carried unforgiveness in your heart. And you'll never walk in the love of Christ as long as you carry that unforgiveness towards another. Surrender it. Just let it go. I'm asking you I'm awake I want to be wide awake are you